Hello, everybody. This is uh, our JAWS webinar for the month. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, today, JAWS and Text Analyzer. Do you hear what I hear? Hopefully you do. And you'll hear everything that you want to hear today. So welcome again to JAWS and Text Analyzer. Do you hear what I hear? Uh, so what we're going to do, something a little different today, to get us started because uh, some folks have, have mentioned that they have a little trouble with poll questions. Uh, when we're talking, uh, it may be difficult for folks to follow along with the poll questions. And it may also be that you're like me, you're a screen reader user and you couldn't do the poll questions before. You didn't know how to do it. It didn't work very well. Uh, at some point, Zoom has made some improvements that or I have figured it out. I don't know which it is. We'll give Zoom the credit. And now I can go through the poll questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk everybody through these poll questions. And then we're going to give everybody a short period of time of silence to complete them with a screen reader if you're using one. Uh, this would be a good time if you've never tried to do this. This is a good time to do it. So I'm going to screen share. You're not going to hear anything yet, but I'm going to hit Alt S for screen share. It will stop other screen sharing. Well, do I want to continue? I will tab to yes and hit enter. So I have now uh, hostily taken over the screen. Um, now it's going to give me a checkbox for share sound. I'm going to hit that. That's what Liz does for the webinars when you hear JAWS. So I'm going to tab. Once is for optimized for video. I don't need that. Share screen button. Once I hit this with enter, you should hear JAWS, which I've slowed down. Started screen share. Zoom webinar. To activate. Right. Press space bar. Says, screen share. Oh, don't go real fast. Um, okay. So, Betsy Ann, if you could put these poll questions out. Absolutely, I'm launching the poll now. Poll, who is with us today? And polling button to active. Okay. Now Jaws has decided to move quick. So Liz, what's the keystroke to get me to slow this down quick? Maybe she can't hear okay, me. Okay, sorry, I was muted. I was couldn't get unmuted. unmuted. Um, control, Windows, Alt, and page down 100 percent from the knees okay no page down page um up. it's a laptop oh so, um hey sharky slow down 40 percent he's not gonna do it all right well we're gonna just do this anyway the point is that you hear what i'm doing um captions has joined the meeting 33 percent okay we have our captioner all right so the polls are up so Let's say I don't know what's going on with these polls. So I'm going to tab. Who is with us today in progress? It has lasted 59 seconds. Who is with us? It's lasted 59 seconds. Hopefully you can hear that. So I'm going to, let's say I've never seen these polls. I don't know what to do next. So I'm going to try an arrow key. Does nothing. So let me tab one time. Attendees are now viewing questions. 12 of 49 left parent, 24% right parent voted. All right. Got some information. 12 of 49 have voted. List box. To move to an item, press the arrow keys. Attendees are now viewing questions. 13 of 51 left parent, 25% right parent voted. Okay. List box. To move to an item, press the arrow key. 27%. So something's going on here. So let me use my down arrow key. One. What is your job title? Left parent, multiple choice, right parent. The question has 10 alternative answers. To move to an item, press the arrow keys. 31%. Okay. Now it's giving me the question and the choices. Now the only Two. way Where are you from? The question to get there, if I, if I want to go question to question, I can use down arrow. But I didn't answer question one yet. So let's go back up. One. What is your job title? Left parent, multiple What's your choice, job right? title? So I have to tab. Teacher visually impaired. Left parent five slash sixteen. Right parent thirty one percent. And I'm getting all the polling results too as we're doing this. So 59%. let's say teacher general ed. Left parent zero slash seventeen. Right parent zero percent. I want to pick impaired. Left parent one five slash seventeen. I'm right parent. That teacher general ed. Left parent not teacher general ed. Oh, them instructor. Left parent three eight. Assistive technology specialist. Assistive left parent three eight. Real transcriber. Left parent one slash eighteen. Right parent six percent. I'm a transcriber, so I'll thirty space. Hit check on that. Rehabilitation professional. Left Student, left parent, one slash 19, right parent. Student, Extra physio, trustee, assistant, left parent, left parent, zero, parent, slash other, left parent, four slash 19, other, right parent, 21%. Space. Yes to other. 
and pulling button to activate quest. Who is with us today? In progress, it has lasted 2 minutes and 32 seconds. Now. Attendees are now viewing questions. 19 of 6. 1. What is your job title? Let's go to question 2. 2. Where are you from? The question has eight alternative answers to move Where are you from? So I'm going to tab and pick my choice. Northeast, U.S., left parent, 6, right parent, 32%. Northeast, no. Southeast, U.S., left parent, 1, right parent, 5%. I guess we're considered southeast, so I'll hit yes to that. Northwest, U.S., left, southwest, U.S., left parent, 6, right parent, Midwest, U.S., Alaska, Slash, Hawaii, left, U.S. territory, left parent, 0, international, left parent, 1, right parent, 5%. We're not any of that, so I'm going to tap back, shift tab back over to question 3. How did you hear about this webinar? How did you hear about this webinar? And I did not read you the other questions. Um, we want to know besides that. Well, let me answer this question, and then we'll read it. APH website, left parent, right parent, 29%. So the website, I'll space. pick that. Email from APH, left parent, 18, right parent, 6, space. University Email. faculty, left parent. Social media, faculty, left parent one, social media. website, left parent, a friend of colleague, left parent one, right parent, 3%. Let's space. pick that Other left parent, okay. a friend of colleague, three, attendees are not three. And now, four. What is your comfort level using the last question, question four, is what is your comfort level? From everyone calling me off again five minutes early to do trivia or like today, a special presentation with, on using uh, Jaws. What is your comfort level with Jaws? So, beginner, left parent, 16, right beginner, parent, beginner, intermediate, left parent, eight, right parent, Intermediate, 26. and I'm getting to hear how many have picked these things, which... 34%. I don't remember ever seeing before. Advanced. Left parent four, right Advanced. Parent, third, left parent two, right parent, Jedi. 6%. So I'm going to hit that. Space. And pulling button to activate. And. Space R. Who is with us today? Attendees are not four. What is your beginner? Left parent. Intermediate. Advanced. GD. Left parent two. And pulling button. Once that's done. Today. In progress. It has lasted four minutes and zero. Attendees are now with four. What? Atten four. Beginner. Intermediate. Susan. GD. Left parent two. And pulling button. Who is with us today? I, I don't want to end polling. Attendees are now Why is it four. Why not letting what me submit? Your, beginner. Left. Susan. Advanced. Left parent. GD. Left parent two. Right parent. Six percent. Space. Enter. And pulling button to act. Who is with us today? In progress. It's, and who is with us today? In progress. It has lasted four minutes and twenty-five seconds. Attendees are now viewing quest four. One beginner left parent intermediate. It's advanced. not letting me hit and pulling button. Who the is with us today? In pro and pulling button to act. I don't want to end the polling. How are we doing for? Okay. Thank you. Hopefully that helped out. Um, it was a little bit finicky with me today, but otherwise I think we did pretty pretty well with it. So let's talk about our ground rules and housekeeping. Uh, we are going to have a handout. In the link to it is in the chat. Uh, it's on our website, and we will put that up there for you a number of times so that you can get to the handout. Place your questions in the chat. There is going to be times that the chat's going to be off. We have demos and things happening. But when it's open, we will give you time to put those questions in and build in some silence so that folks, if they have any trouble with that, alt H is what you need to hit to open that chat panel. If you type right then, which you can, that chat will just go to panelists. If you shift tab, you can find a spot where you can send it to go to everybody, but you have to down arrow a couple times to get to that place and then press enter. So if you don't care if everybody sees it and you just want to make sure that we do, go ahead and just start typing in after you hit all H. One and a half hours ACV REB credit, REP credit, as you know, closed captioning is available. Joining us today, as with all the previous webinars on JAWS, Elizabeth Whitaker, technical writer from Vespero. Our challenges, we have two. Finding inconsistencies in text can be difficult. So you're going through, you have a paper, you're writing, you're not really sure if everything looks right, if there's spaces that are there that don't belong, if there are words in different fonts, especially if you've done copying and pasting and you're not really sure, you need to find those things out. Or you are given the fun task of taking a standardized test that says, what is the meaning of the underlined word? Well, how are we gonna find that? JAWS won't normally tell you that. So you want to find formatting and spacing errors in documents if you want to find inconsistencies, or you need to find what's italicized and underlined. Uh, this is a great way to do that. Our learning objectives, we have several. We're going to identify two benefits of using Text Analyzer. We're going to review three types of errors identified by Text Analyzer. Identify the four options for analyzing text review six steps for selecting an option in Text Analyzer, identify one keyboard command to navigate through inconsistencies in text or on a web page, 
identify three steps for selecting a JAWS speech and sound scheme. And we'll definitely see how those work today. Those are gonna be fun. So with that all out of the way, it's time to let Liz take over. All right, thank you, Paul. And thanks once again from 2APH for having me here today. I always love doing these. So we're gonna talk about, like Paul said, he brought, he brought up some really great points there, Paul, about proofreading documents and how that can be very challenging with a screen reader, especially when you're trying to format text and I'll give you a really good example of that is, you know, if you're writing a paper or an article of some kind and you need to insert a link in there, you want the link to show up as a link, but you don't want the text around it to look like a link, to be underlined and have that same color and that same formatting. And so sometimes these things happen and, you know, you, you don't want to go post that article somewhere and, and have it not look right. So that's a great way using these features, using text analyzer, and I'll show you more about speech and sound schemes as well, like Paul said, uh, it is a great way to determine those things. So just going to talk a little bit about what I'm going to cover today. I'm going to do less uh, demonstration. Well, okay, we're going to cover fewer topics so we can do more demonstration than I usually do because I really want to delve into these topics and show you how useful these features are. Uh, I know as a JAWS user, I've, I've known about these features for years and I don't use them nearly enough, or at least I didn't until recently. So I think that these will really improve productivity and proficiency for students, professionals, or anyone, you know, whether you're working on your computer at home or whatever it is that you're doing. So let's talk about what I'm going to cover. Um, I'm going to start by telling you what is text analyzer, which we've pretty much defined, but I'm going to talk a little more about that. I'm going to show you some ways of configuring text analyzer and I'm going to show you a few different ones because I want to show you the, the JAWS quick settings as well as the setting center and talk a little bit about that and uh, some keyboard commands. We're going to talk about the benefits of using text analyzer. Then we're going to delve into what are speech and sound schemes? What do they do? I'll show you how to select a scheme. And I'm gonna to touch on a little bit about creating them. We're not really gonna delve into that so much because that's a more involved, that, that could be a webinar in of itself. But I do want you to know that you can and explain why you would want to do that. The benefits also of using speech and sound schemes. And then I'm gonna give you some resources for that as well and tell you about a contest that we have at Vespero for creating speech and sound schemes. So if you or your students or anyone you know want to, wants to get involved in that, we definitely recommend it. So I will be giving you several resources today and I want you to feel free to ask questions. But I'm, I'm gonna demonstrate these things, but just know that the, the handout contains all the steps involved, contains all the topics I'm talking about, and also the resources that I'm gonna give you are great training resources so that you can go back and review this stuff and go ahead and, and start trying it out. So let's just start talking about what is text analyzer. So like Paul said, text analyzer will notify you of inconsistencies in a document as well as errors. Things like format changes uh, or, you know, document or even on, on a web page, uh, things like unmatched parentheses. So for example, if you had two left parentheses instead of a left and right, or maybe you had some straight punctuation where you accidentally press space before a comma or a period. Maybe you had a, an extra space after a period or, you know, a, once again, you know, stray spaces in there. Text analyzer will notify you of all of that. So where I find this to be most useful is when proofing documents, you know, you read a document, you spell check it, you do a grammar check, and you can, you can go through there and JAWS will read the misspelled words. It'll tell you where, where those are. But sometimes with this other, uh, these other formatting changes, you won't know that necessarily. And in order to find that out, you would have to use a lot of different keyboard commands and, um, you know, it'd be, it'd be a very lengthy process. So Text Analyzer allows you to skip quickly through those changes in your document 
and notifies you that they're there so that you can fix them or so that you know that, that they exist. So now let's talk about uh, configuring text analyzer. And let's throw out our yeah. poll question before we do that. Yeah, sorry about that. I just no remembered. No problem. <laughs> yeah, uh, so we want to ask you this question. Which items can text analyzer identify? Check all that apply. Extra spaces, spelling mistakes, font changes, punctuation errors, or errors in grammar, and finally, misplaced capitalization. So there are six. Which ones can text analyzer identify? Check all that apply. Extra spaces, spelling mistakes, font changes, punctuation errors, errors in grammar, or misplaced capitalization. So uh, this is a good time. The chat's open. Put your questions in the chat. We'll give you some time quietly to work on these polls, as well as putting your questions in the Had chat. Just a few people in our chat, but feel free again to drop questions there. We're going to go ahead and share our early results, but feel free to keep on putting your responses in the poll. Which items can text analyzer identify? Check all that apply. So this was a multiple choice question. 91% said extra spaces, 60% said spelling mistakes, 82% said font changes, 86% punctuation errors, 41% said errors in grammar, and finally 78% said misplaced capitalization. So Elizabeth, can you tell us which of these are the correct responses? What can text analyzer identify? Sure, let's go, let's go down this list one by one and I'll, I'll tell you, let's see, what was the first one? The first one was- Extra spaces? Extra spaces, yes. It will uh, notify you of those. Spelling mistakes. No, but JAWS will notify you of those. And, and I might have confused you guys just a few minutes ago about that. I apologize for that. JAWS will notify you of spelling and grammar mistakes, but text analyzer is what notifies you of spaces, uh, extra punctuation, uh, font changes. Uh, and there was another one in there. Yeah, too. font changes, font. punctuation errors, and misplaced capitalization. Yes, misplaced capitalization. I knew I was leaving one out. So yes, it will notify you of those things, which again, misplaced capitalization is one of those things that unless you're reading word by word, character by character, which you know, you're probably not gonna be doing too much of when you're reading a document, you might not know. And Elizabeth, we did have one question come in the chat that seems really pertinent to this sure. conversation. Why does text analyzer always tell you quotes aren't closed if the quote extends over more than one line? I do not know the answer to that. Uh, if anybody else knows the answer, feel free to put that in chat. I do not know the answer to that. That's a really good question. I think that may be a bug. It might be. Mm. You may have just I'll, given us something yeah, to report. I'll check into that because if that is, we will definitely check into that. Absolutely. And uh, the same commenter also asked, how can you jump quickly to a space run or mistake on a line with having to arrow over? Um, so when, when, which I will, I'll demonstrate this in a second, when, um, when it notifies you that it's on that line, you can, and I know this is what you're trying not to do, you can use control right arrow uh, which will take you word by word. And let's let's see what happens. I'm going to demonstrate that here in just a second. Then I think I have a couple space runs in this document. So that is another re really good question. Awesome. So our commenter for the next question is, how do you fix an error that Text Analyzer finds? And so it's great that we're going to jump into a yeah. demo. Yeah, so we're I'm definitely going gonna... to get into that. Excellent. So I'm going to go ahead and close the chat so Elizabeth can continue with her presentation. We will reopen the chat when we launch our next poll question. So keep those questions in mind for when we open the chat up soon. So to answer that question, how to fix an error, uh, when Text Analyzer, when JAWS tells you what the error is, you'll know, what, like it'll tell you what the error is. So you'll know what error you need to fix. And I'll demonstrate that. But before we get into that, before I show you how to navigate to the different um, inconsistencies in your document, let's talk about how to configure Text Analyzer. 
And there are a couple ways to do this. You can monitor your document continuously. So you can turn it on and have a text analyzer constantly inform you when you're reading of those inconsistencies. Um, and I say document, you can do this on web pages too, but you can do it and we're, we're gonna use a Word document today, but you can also do this in Google Docs, just to let you know, it will work in Docs. You can set this in JAWS Quick Settings, um, which will allow you to use Text Analyzer while that application is open. You can set it in Settings Center. There's also a keyboard command that will turn Text Analyzer on and off. And then there's a way to monitor manually while you're moving through your document. And you can do that even if text analyzer is off. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here so I can show you how to do this. Oh, I'm trying to, oh, here we go. And I'm going to share my sound so that you guys can hear what's going on. Screen share. Demo and changing I'm going to go over here to a edit. document. All right. Heading level one changing JAWS settings. So I have a document here that is on how to change JAWS settings. Uh, it's just a document that I want to use. And I've, I've created some inconsistencies here. I think I have a couple of space runs and things like that. So the first way I'm going to show you to do this is to, to use the JAWS quick settings. You're going to press insert V as in Victor to open the JAWS quick settings. So I'm going to do that now. Insert V. Elizabeth, I hate uh -huh. to interrupt, but your screen is currently minimized. Okay, um, okay. Not your screen, but your document. Document. Do you mind maximizing okay. menu. the system document. Menus are unavailable. X, leaving menus. I guess it didn't stay maximized. Heading is that level. better? There it is. Thank you. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you very much for letting me know that. All right, so we're going to press insert space. Or I'm sorry, insert V to open the JAWS quick settings. Quick settings dash word dialog search box edit control plus E. And this, these are going to be quick settings for Word. I'm going to type here. I have a search box. I'm going to go ahead and type text analyzer. You can you can either type the whole word or you can start typing it. We'll find it. X E space N A L Z E R. And then I'm going to down Text arrow. Analyzer, one of one search results. Okay, so it told us that we have one of one search results. I'm going to down arrow. One search results list box. Text analyzer off. Reading options. All right, so text analyzer is complete is currently off right now, but I can cycle through these different options by pressing the space bar. Space indicate with sound two or four. So that's going to indicate with a sound. It's going to play a sound to indicate what that inconsistency is space speak count three or four that's going to speak the number of uh inconsistencies on a line space describe inconsistencies and, four or four and that's going to describe where they are so like i said if you choose indicate with sound you'll hear a sound that will play when you're navigating through your document line by line and when you're on a line that contains an error or an inconsistency when you choose speak count, it'll provide the number of inconsistencies on a given line when you're on that line. And describe inconsistencies provides the type and the location of the inconsistencies on each line. So when text line analyzer is off, of course, you don't get any inconsistencies spoken. So I'm going to, once again, I'll show you space text through analyzer. these. Space off one of space indicate with sound two or four and space speak choose, count three of space describe inconsistencies. Let's choose describe inconsistencies because I'm I'd like to know what they are. So I'm going to tab read only edit expand preview check OK button to OK and I'm going to press space space and so I've now turned it on heading level one exchanging jaw settings. Oh see. X. I had a letter there. Space run at column 14. Jaw settings allow you to customize important features to meet your needs. Learn how to access colon. All right. So you heard it say space run at column 14. It just told me where that is. Now, I can navigate to this. Settings. Jaws. A. W. S. Space. S. E. T. T. I. N. G. S. Space. Space. And there it is. Um, sometimes you just have to navigate through the line. I can go one word at a time. Set so I go back to the beginning. And after the word Setting. JAWS settings, I can see if, or after the word JAWS, I can see if that space. Space, S, 
that double space is between Sierra. JAWS and settings, space, and it's not. Allow space, space. But there it is. So to answer the question, how do you fix that? I know that there are two spaces here, so I'm space. just going to backspace to delete one of them. I go to the second space, and I'm going to backspace space. and get rid of one of them. And now I can check using my arrow keys here, my left arrow key. S space A. And there's only one. Alpha. There's only one space there. So if I up arrow again, heading level one changing jaw settings. There's the heading, there's the title of the document. And if I down arrow, jaw settings allow you to customize important features to meet your needs. Learn how to access colon. And it did, did not say there was a space run there. So that's just a little <laughs> demo on how to find those errors that are, you know, that are there. I'm going to keep down arrowing. Let's see if what else it tells us here. Level one, bullet the startup wizard. Bullet basics, font change at column 7, font change at column 22, bullet the setting center. All right, now it told me that there's a font change at column 7 and a font change at column 22. And there are ways, uh, you know, you, you can navigate quickly through that information. But uh, especially if you're just starting out, you're not learning how to navigate documents, you're learning how to proofread documents. Um, you know, you want to just understand that when you're on this line. SG. Um, bullet font change at column seven, font change at column 22, bullet the setting center. Now, S -G. where it placed me here, Golf. let's see, let's see, I'm going to, it placed me in the middle of this line. So it may have placed me on this current font change. Let's see, the keyword command to have JAWS read your font is insert F as in Frank. 11 point, black on yellow, calibri, list bullet style, line. All right. So it says a whole lot of other things too, but what I wanted to hear was the font name, the font, let's see, let's do that again, insert F. 11 point, black on yellow, calibri, list bullet style. And you notice it said black on yellow. So I have something highlighted in yellow. So it picked up on that and it placed me in the middle of that font change there. So by default, Let's go back up here. I want to Top of jaw set, tell you something setting, as well. Allow, space, so we had this sp head space run at column 14. You had this space run at column 14. By default, when you're reading a line, JAWS usually places you, the cursor is at the beginning of that line. However, space, S, space, space. in this situation, it took me to that inconsistency on that line. So it takes you to that first inconsistency on that line. Space, space. So if that answers your question about how to quickly navigate. Now, if you have multiple inconsistencies, that's different. So I'm gonna take space, this space out. Level bullet basics, font change at column seven, font change at column 22. So it, notice, it notices here that I have, if I go to the beginning of the line with the home key, home key. it says T and that, that's the beginning of my line. If I press Insert and the letter F to read the font to me. 11 point, black on white, delivery, list bullet style. So it knows it's a, it's a bullet list here. That tells me that. 11 point, black on white. It's black on white. Now if I move over here. Settings, center, blank. Center, settings, space, S. 11 point, black on yellow, delivery, list. So it recognizes that black on yellow. So to answer that question, yes, it usually will move to the inconsistency on that line and then you can just fix that if there if it is something you need to change you can do that all right so if i were to just continue down arrowing here um, it would describe those inconsistencies now i'm going to show you another way to change it and we're going to use a different setting here um, if you let's go to the jaws setting center i'm going to do that by pressing insert six on the number row Word dash jaw setting center dialog search box edit control plus e. All right, so we're in the word jaws the jaw settings for word. If I want to change these settings for all applications that support text analyzer, I can do that by pressing control shift D. Jaw setting center dash default left parent all applications right parent. So I have I get to choose there. I can either leave it in Word or I can press control, control Shift D for default. So search box edit. I want to make sure I'm still in the search box. I'm going to type text analyzer. T E A T S A -A, A L Z E R. And I'm going to let it text analyzer. One of two search results. All right, let it find it. I'm going to down arrow to that setting. Two search results, result. list box, text analyzer. Okay, now I am going to space. Space. 
Oh, wait. Text analyzer turned off. Text. Okay. I had to down arrow twice there. So I'm going to space. Space. Indicate with sound. Two or four. There's indicate with sound. Space. Speak count. Three or four. And speak count. Let's see what that does. Uh, I'm going to show you what that does. So we're on speak count. I'm going to tab to OK. Read. Apply. OK button. Apply button. Let's do apply first. Space. Two. Read only edit. Oops. Use the radio. All right. Use the radio paragraph or say all. Use the radio buttons in this group to determine the type of alert used to indicate errors when editing or proofreading a document by line, sentence, paragraph, or say all. OK button. Space. And there's okay. Demo changing jaw settings dash word. Edit. All right. So now. Font change at column two. Level one. Bullet basics. Font change at column seven. Font change at column 22. Bullet the settings center. Bullet quick settings. Bullet settings on the fly. So it still, it, it'll tell us there we have two. Let's make sure that setting took effect. I'm going to go back to the setting center here with uh, insert six. I'm going to press control shift D. Jaw setting center. I'm going to type text analyzer. D -E -Z. Text analyzer. And I'm going to go back down here. To search results list box, text analyzer, speak count, text analyzer. So that's a good way to know where text analyzer is set. So if I wanted to set that for sound. Space, describe inconsistencies. So we've already done describe inconsistencies. Space, turn off. We can turn it off. Space, indicate with sound. We can indicate with sound. So let's tab here to OK. Read, apply button, alt plus A, space, read, OK, space. Demo change. And let's see what happens when I up and down arrow here. We know there's some font changes. Level one. Bullet quick settings. Bullet settings on the fly. Bullet font change at column seven. Font change at column 22. All right. I'm not sure. Let's see. Maybe I'll go. I did the default. Let's try it with uh, just Word. Word, Word settings. Here. Se All right. So I'll type. I'm just going to leave it on Word settings e -E. and type text analyzer. R. Two search. Space, turn off, one of space, indicate with sound, there two of four, three, apply, okay, but space, demo changing, level one, there we go, bullet okay. basics, that was my fault, so, um, you hear that little sound there, bullet the setting center, that indicates that there is an inconsistency, it doesn't necessarily tell you what that is, but you can go in and configure that, bullet basics, bullet the setting center, bullet quick settings, bullet settings on the fly, so, I like, let's try speak count. Let's go back to speak count. I want to show you how this works as well. Word dash job T E. So I type in R. text analyzer once text. again. Two search results. Space, speak count, three of four, three, apply, okay, space. Demo okay. change, level, bullet settings on the fly. Bullet quick settings, bullet, bullet language settings, bullet, bullet two errors, bullet the settings center. There we go. Okay, so it said two errors. So it recognizes that there, is, there are two errors on that line, then you would have to find those errors. If you're just starting out using JAWS or if, if this is a new feature for you, you might want to have it describe those inconsistencies because it'll actually tell you what they are. Uh, but again, that's personal preference, but at least you, know, you will be notified of font changes and things like the, the extra spaces and straight punctuation and things. All right. So I'm going to show you another keyboard command. This is a quick command. If you're proofing a document and you just really want to turn this on quickly without having to go through all of these settings, this is what's called a layered command. So with JAWS, uh, we have a command layer, which is insert space. That's how you activate it, which allows you to then use different letters to perform different tasks. So if I press insert space to activate the command layer, Space. And then A. Speech on demand. Oh, sorry. I pressed the wrong key. Full speech. There we go. Space. The text analyzer will describe all inconsistencies. All right. So I pressed insert space and the letter A, and it said the text analyzer will describe all inconsistencies. So now we're reading this document. Font change at column two. Bullet basics. And again, it's going to tell us font change at column two. Font change at column seven. Font change at column 22. Bullet the setting center. E. S. Sierra. And we're back at that font change. We can verify that with insert F. 11 point black on yellow. Calibri list. And if I left arrow. Space. 11 point black on white. So what it did was it put me at the beginning of that font change. So once again, that's just a quick command for turning it on. And then if I do that again, if I press insert space. Space. And the letter A. 
The text analyzer is off. It turns it off. So this command toggles it between describe the inconsistencies and turn it off. So if, like I said, if you, if you write a document, you're working on something and you just really want to check it really quickly, or you just want to turn that on and, and look at your document, that's a great way to do it. All right, and finally, I'm gonna go back to the top of the document with Control Home. Top of file level. You can navigate through your inconsistencies or errors in a document using the keyboard. You can press Alt Windows I, and even if you have Text Analyzer turned off, it'll take you through those different inconsistencies. And I'm gonna do that now, Alt Windows I. Font change, Calibri 11 points, Black, Jaws. Font change, level one period, the. Font change, the. And this is navigating us through the different font changes. Space. So once again, uh, let's go back up to top the top. Of five, level zero. All right. So if I know that my current font is 16 point steel blue four on white Calibri. It's the Calibri font um, and it's a larger font because it's a heading. So if I want to go to the next inconsistency, I press Alt Windows I. Font change Calibri 11 points black. And it just told me that now we're at 11 point. And it said black. If I do it again, font change level one period. The now I want to see what my font is, so I'm going to press insert F. Eleven point black on white Calibri list bullet style. And it's it's a bullet style, so that's why it's telling me that. I'll do it again. Font change the font change basics. Font change basics. Font change the font change the. So right now it's just telling me font changes. There, let me Top. go back up here and insert that space, double space again. Jaws home. Settings, allow, space, F, Oops. F, space. There we go. All right. Top so of, now if I press Alt-Windows I. Font change, Calibri 11 point, space run at column 37. Space, space. And it puts me right there on that space one. That's what they call it, a space run. So it puts me right there on that double S, space. Space, space. So I could delete it. Space. So that is a way to quickly just navigate through those inconsistencies. Um, you know, that one, it might, once again, if you're pretty new to this feature, it might be easier just to use the describe option and have it describe what those inconsistencies are. Because when it's telling you things, font change, level one period, you know, you know, it's a font change, but unless you're reading the entire line, you may not know why that's important. If you're reading the entire line, you know, whether there's a link there or whether Perhaps you have a link and then the rest of the line is still underlined, even though it's not part of the link and things like that. But I did want to show you that command. And if you add shift to that command, it will go backward uh, through your inconsistency. So uh, I know that was a lot of information there. Once again, I want you to think of this as, you know, demonstration and uh, feel free to ask questions. And then also the document that's been provided will serve as the step-by-step -step on how to navigate through the text analyzer settings. So just to kind of recap, once again, you can use the JAWS quick settings, which is insert V and then type text analyzer down arrow to it and press the space to navigate through the different options. You can use the JAWS setting center, which is insert six on the number row. And uh, once again, type text analyzer and down arrow. And then, uh, and those changes will stay permanent when you use setting center. And so it'll it'll remain on or on whatever setting until you change it. If you just want to quickly navigate, you know, quickly use text analyzer, you can press insert space and the letter A, and that toggles you between uh, dis where it will describe all the inconsistencies or off. And uh, just to let you know if you press insert space then A, and then you want to turn it off. Say, so you, you know, may, maybe you didn't want to turn it on quite yet, and you think I want to turn it off. You have to press insert space A again. You can't just press A the second time uh, because that A is the insert space, and then followed by A is a whole command. So, and then once again, your Windows Alt I will navigate through the different errors and inconsistencies in your document. Meeting and demo chain. So, I'm going to go back Ask here. Demo and chain. Meeting control. Stop sharing my screen Alt for a minute. And then. Open. Let's see if you guys have questions. Do we okay, have, and um, we have another poll question, don't we? This is another poll question, and great time to put some stuff in the chat. Uh, so we want to know how do you launch Text Analyzer and check all that apply. You can ask Sharky. Keyboard command insert plus space 
and then A. Turn it on in the JAWS settings center. Pick all that apply. You can ask Sharky. You can use the keyboard command insert plus space followed by A or turn it on in the JAWS settings uh, center. Feel free to put those in there, but let's review uh, where we are so far in this poll response. For the question, how do you launch text analyzer? Check all that apply. 22% said you can ask Sharky. 84% said you use the keyboard command insert plus space followed by A. And 90% said turn it on in the JAWS setting center. Elizabeth, which one of those are correct? All except ask Sharky. Great, so you can use that keyboard command and turn it on in the JAWS setting center. Right, correct. And that may be something, oh, sorry, I set my own Sharky off. Sorry about that for anybody uh -huh. uh, who I may have just accidentally set off. <laughs> um, I set both computers off here. So uh, yeah, that may be something that we'll be able to do in the future. So not quite yet. All right. And we did have a few questions come in Great. in the chat. Uh, one is, is text analyzer available in JAWS 2019? Yes. Great. Um, another question, and this one I might be able to help with. Does anyone know how to open the link that was sent using VoiceOver and the iPhone app? So I think this is in reference to the handout link that I shared earlier. Um, that's where, uh, Elizabeth, we've placed a really great handout with some important keystrokes and information that you're going to learn in today's webinar. Um, does anyone have any advice on how to use VoiceOver in the iPhone app to open well, the link? If you you should be able to double tap on it. I just, I'm not sure what you're seeing or where you're seeing it, but double tap should work. If it doesn't, for some reason, uh, make sure your rotor is turned to links and look for it that way. One of those two should work. Or worst case scenario, uh, you should have gotten it in an email and we can tell you how to get to the website where the, the handouts are, are stored as well. So there's multiple ways to get to it. Great, another... Uh message that just came in in the chat that I want to share with everyone. Also, you might remind people if text analyzer is activated and you leave the window, you need to reactivate it. And yes, text analyzer goes way back for the people who are asking if it's available in yes. 2018, so on and so forth. So that's a really great note. Right. Um, that is true. If you go through the JAWS setting center, though, it should remain active. So for example, I've left uh, the document here and I just went back over to the document and it's, it's still set on speak count. Great. But I've yes, also, you are, that is correct though. All right. And I'm gonna also drop a link into the chat. Um, this is for uh, the, the webinar is being recorded today and you can find this webinar in about a week's time. We usually take about a week to get them posted, but you can also find previous webinars that Elizabeth has presented on different aspects of JAWS at this link. And one final question coming into the chat. Mm -hmm. Can you go back to your demo document and show how you would change font inconsistencies once they are identified? For example, highlighted words. Okay, sure. Be happy to do that. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. So yeah, I just want to clarify. Uh, yes, uh, if, if you change the text analyzer settings within, for example, the... Uh, insert space or within the JAWS settings center, uh, I'm sorry, within the JAWS quick settings, yes, when you leave that window, uh, you, you will probably have to turn that back on when you come back. But if you do it through the JAWS settings center with that insert six, it will retain that setting. So I am going to share my screen once again. All right, so Demo changing JAWS settings dashboard. back in my document, I'm gonna quickly turn on can is my document maximized is, still, or do I need to do that again? It is, it's still maximized. It okay, great. So I'm gonna press insert space once again 
space. And then A. The text analyzer will describe all inconsistencies. To have it describe all inconsistencies. And so to answer your question. Heading. Um, JAWS settings allow you to custom the startup wizard. Font change at column two. Level one. Bullet basics. All right. So if I want to know what that font change is, once again, uh, I can press insert F as in Frank. 11 point, black on white, calibri, list bullet style, line space and colon one line. So it recognizes that we have a bulleted list here. Levels, font, font change at column 7, font change at column 22. All right, this is the one we're really interested in because this one was specifically mentioned here. So once again, I'm going to press insert F. 11 point, black on yellow, calibri, list bullet style. All right, so this is yellow highlighted text. Now if I want to change that, I can go into... Um, Let's see, I can press Alt, Upper ribbon, H, ribbon, H, H, I, I, table, text, highlight, color, table, yellow button. And then this is where I have the highlighted color. Um, I can find the color that I want. So no color button selected, Alt plus N, leaving menus, leaving ribbons, edit. I left arrow to no color and pressed enter. Font, font change at column 7, font change at column 22. Now, it's still telling me there's a font change here, so let's see what this is. I'm going to do insert F. 11 point, black on yellow, calibri, list bullet style. And that didn't change it. E, S. Oh, I know why it didn't Sierra, change it. Set, because I have to select that text. Okay, sorry, that's a very important thing. If you're, if something is highlighted or you need to change font information, you have to select the text that's highlighted. So. Space. If I left arrow here, because what it did is it put me on the font, on the first letter of the word that where the font change took place. So I'm going to verify that by pressing insert F. 11 point, black on white. So that's black on white. Yes. So I happen Sierra. to know here that the word setting center are highlighted because I highlighted them. But if I didn't know that, I'll go to the next word with control right arrow. Center. Press insert F again. 11 point, black on yellow. That's still yellow, so let's go to the next. Blank. Let's go after R, blank. the R, insert F. 11 point, black on white. So there we go. So now I've narrowed it down. I know that the words settings center are highlighted yellow. I'm going to go back to the word settings by pressing control left arrow. Set settings. And now I'm going to select those two words. So control right arrow navigates one word at a time to the right. Control left arrow navigates to the left. If I add the shift key to those, uh, to that command, it will select those words. So I'll press control shift right arrow. Settings selected, center selected. All right, now let's go back. Alt H. Upper ribbon, H. I. I. Table, text, highlight, color. No color button, Alt plus N. Try leaving no menus, leaving ribbons, print view, edit. All right, now I'm going to up arrow and down arrow, and let's see. Level bullet to settings center. And it did not indicate that there were any inconsistencies in fonts. But Quit blank. Center settings. I can go back to the word settings and press insert F. 11 point, black on white, calibri, center. Center. 11 point, black on white. And we no longer have highlighted text. So that's just, that's how you would fix that particular inconsistency. Um, one of the things, and I mentioned this earlier with underlined text, sometimes you'll have for example, if you insert a link into a document and it might underline the rest of that line when the rest of that line is not part of the link. So in a situation like that, if something's bolded or underlined, you would select the that text that you don't want to be underlined or bolded. And then you can use control U to turn underline on and off. That's a toggle. So you'd use control U to turn it off or control B to turn off bold. So knowing how to fix the inconsistencies is really about learning some of these keyboard commands and learning how to perform those particular tasks, like knowing how to bold or underline or change the font and things like that and change the color. So I hope that answered your question. I hope that was, that was what you wanted to know there. Task switching. Meeting. So I'm going to switch back over here and I'm going to stop sharing my screen for just a second. Okay. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the benefits of Text Analyzer, which we've already covered, but I would like to just go ahead and reiterate that Text Analyzer does allow you to quickly find errors and inconsistencies in your document. And this is a really convenient feature because, once again, it keeps you from having to read documents and lines, you know, read documents word by word. Um, you can catch 
errors that you didn't even think about, things like the, the inconsistent font um, that we just talked about, uh, stray capital letters and things you didn't mean to capitalize, or things that should be capitalized that aren't um, stray punctuation marks and stray spaces and things like that. Using text analyzer can improve your proficiency for students, professionals, and just for personal use as well. And it allows you to edit your documents more independently. And I think that's a very important point as well. You know, when you're when you've written this long paper, you have this really long document, and you want to know, you know, you you need to find those inconsistencies because you don't want to be counted off for those, Text Analyzer allows you to narrow that down. And then, you know, if you, you still want to have somebody proofread it and check it over, you'll have a lot fewer things for them to catch. So let's see if we have any more questions about Text Analyzer before we move on to the speech and sound schemes. Great. I'm going to open the chat up again. And we'll ask our next full question. Simple yes. true or false question on this one. Text analyzer can only be used to monitor one document at a time. True or false? Text analyzer can only be used to monitor one document at a time. So far for the question true or false, text analyzer can only be used to monitor one document at a time. 58% said true, 42% said false. Can I turn it back over to you, Elizabeth, to uh, let us know which one is correct? Sure. Um, the answer is false because you can set text analyzer in different applications and different documents at one time. You can have it monitor continuously, so you can have it monitor more than one document at a time. Now, where I also you know, mentioned earlier, though, you have to go into the JAWS setting center to do that. So if you, for example, if you use that insert space bar and then you press the letter A to have it describe inconsistencies and then you navigate over to another window, like right now I'm in my document and I went to the Zoom window and I've come back, um, I have to do that command again. So I know that might be a little confusing, but um, that's a temporary setting. So those are temporary, but the JAWS setting center, the insert six on the number row is, a, is permanent. So, and once again, all of this information is in the handout. So um, I hope that will help. Great, thank you for that, Elizabeth. Um, one thing that just came in in the chat is I wish, I wish text analyzer could warn you about the change in line spacing between the paragraphs. Any advice for this commentor? Now, are we talking um, change in line spacing, like if you have too many spaces or... Um, Hmm, I'm not I, sure. I, sure. I'm not exactly said, certain. Yeah. Yeah. Someone has said use F7. Um, but no, I'm not. If you'd like to. Yeah, I'm not sure what the, the question. And I, if you're in a document, F7 will spell check. Uh, but maybe there's something else you're referring to. Um, I guess maybe from single to double spacing could be part of the right. question if now you can that insert f um the the font command that we've been using if you press insert f and i've been making it stop read but it will it'll read everything from it'll tell you the font size the color uh, foreground and background colors the font whether it's a paragraph or a bullet style the line spacing whether it's you know, whether it's double or single. So it'll read a lot of that information to you. I think I might know what you're referring to, but I'm, I'm not absolutely certain. So if you want to, if you can clarify that, I might be able to answer that question better. Yeah, I think you did answer that question. So thank okay. you so much for that, Elizabeth. Um, one, one question that came in earlier that just might um, be helpful for everyone. Can you explain why it says columns? So I think when you were tabbing into a sentence, 
um, or, or moving through the sentence with your arrows, you were talking about columns. Can you just describe what that means? Columns are used as positional markers. So it will tell you, you know, your text is in column one, column two. Those aren't columns in the sense of you, you have a document where you've created multiple columns. Um, you will have, they're, they're just positioned. They're, they're kind of places in the document where it marks your text. You have X number of columns. Um, in a document, but that's not something that you're you're going to visibly see. It's not like in Excel or something like that. Um, you can, and there there are ways to navigate. You know, there are ways to know what column you're in. Um, things like that, but that's information that, as far as navigation, unless you're doing a lot of higher level nav navigation, you're not really going to use that information. So I know that can be a bit confusing. Um, what's important to know about that is that if it says, you know, font change in column seven, font change in column 22, well, it's going to place you on the first font change. So as you navigate by character, it's going to move to the next column and, and things like that. You know that you can get to the next word and check your font again. And you know that there's another inconsistency on that line. So for me, I would say that's the takeaway to the thing to know there. Um, great, thank you for that explanation. And uh, we have a really great question that transitions us into the next topic. I have a question regarding speech and sound manager. Is it possible to assign sounds to allow a blind person to navigate a color-coded text map, say of the United States? So we can use that as our kickoff into Ooh. talking about sound and speech schemes. Yeah. Um, just just real quick, just to, uh, and I, I did verify this. So the column, each character would be in a column. So if it says font change at column seven, font change at column 22, then um, you know that where it lands you is on column seven. So if you just count those spaces to the right, then you can figure out how many you need to go over to find the next font change. I know that probably sounds more confusing than um, color coding. Wow, that's an interesting for a map. I'm not really sure how that would work for a map. It would have to have, because uh, it, it, if it's a map, it's gonna be an image. But if you had um, text that wasn't inside an image, then you could probably, yeah, you could assign a speech and sound scheme, which is what we're about to talk about. So another really useful, powerful feature that is probably, I know I don't, I haven't used them as much as I should, and I've really started working on, you know, creating these, and these are a lot of fun. Speech and sound schemes allow you to determine uh, how JAWS indicates or distinguishes between different types of information. So by default, when you're reading a document, JAWS is just going to speak all of the text using the same voice, uh, whatever voice you choose. And, uh, you know, it's not going to indicate anything by sound unless you tell it to. You can use speech and sound schemes to distinguish by different the different types of information. For example, you can use a, a speech and sound scheme. You can use a sound to indicate uh, different fonts, to indicate text that is bolded, italicized, or underlined, um, to indicate the foreground and background colors. Uh, or you can tell it that you want to use a different voice uh, that's, you know, and, and I'll demonstrate this here in a second. So you can also use it for indented text, which is very, very useful. So if you're working on a paper and you get to that references page or the um, bibliography page, works cited page, whatever it may be called for whatever your citation style is, you can use it to identify uh, whether or not the text is properly indented. So the first thing I'm, I'm going to share my screen again. And the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to select a speech and sound scheme. So there are several that have already been created that are commonly used schemes that are available in JAWS. You can create a scheme. It's it's a rather 
it's, it's fun process because there's a lot of stuff you can do. Um, so, the, and I'm going to provide you some resources where you can go and practice that if you want to and just have fun with that, play with that. But I want to start out by showing you how to use this feature. So let's share my screen here. And I'm not going to delve too much into this just because it is, uh, there's a lot to it, uh, but I do you are viewing this to show you why. Demo changing jaw settings dash word. You so can you see my document? Is it maximized here? Heading. Hey, I'm so sorry, Elizabeth. My uh, oh, that's fine. mute was on. Yes, we can see it and it's okay. maximized. Great. All right. So speech and sound schemes. If you press insert alt and the letter S as in Sierra, that is the keyboard command to access the speech and sound schemes dialog. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to press insert alt S. Select the scheme dialog. List one, list view. And I just also want to point out too the insert key. I've I've been giving you these these commands that involve the insert key. If you're using a laptop and you don't have a numpad on your computer, you'll want to set the keyboard layout to laptop mode. And when you do that, your caps lock becomes insert. All right, so I pressed insert alt S, and now we have a list of different schemes. Attributes and Word Classic. So we're in Word Classic. That's the one we have it set to. I'm going to go ahead and arrow to one that I've created, or I'm, you can also use first letter navigation, which is where you press the first letter of the choice that you want, and it'll jump to, uh, like, for example, I'm going to press H. H, highlighted text, 3 of 26. And that's the one I want to go to. But if I had one that was, that began with the letter H, that, you know, was, was something before H, I, it would have navigated alphabetically through those. So I pressed H, I'm on highlighted text. I created this scheme because I wanted it to use a different voice when it finds, uh, when JAWS encounters highlighted text. And I specifically told it highlighted text that is that is yellow. So um, I'm gonna press enter. Switch the scheme highlighted text, edit. And it told me it switched that scheme. So now when I down arrow to read this document. JAWS settings allow you to customize important features to meet your needs. Learn how to access colon, the startup wizard, level one, bullet basics, bullet the setting center. And you heard that deeper voice for setting center. So you can choose, but there are a lot of different options to choose there. I could have chosen to have it play a certain sound and I could have chosen between a, a you know, between a lot of different sounds there you have options. Uh, but I chose that voice because it's very in, e easy to distinguish. Um, bullet quick settings, bullet settings on the fly, bullet language settings. Now, uh, I'm going to, just for the sake of time, I'm going to do a find. I'm going to press Control F. Control F. And I'm going to type center. in, uh, well, the word center is already in here because I did this earlier. So I'm going to enter. What I want to show you is what happens, you know, when, when we encounter the term setting center again. So I'll enter, press open, enter. search, and navigate setting center. Escape. The setting center is located in the JAWS utilities menu. So every time I encounter setting center that's highlighted yellow, or in any text that's highlighted yellow, it's going to read that. These include colon. So level one, bullet reading web pages and PDFs. So if I wanted to highlight this line, oh, for example, R. I could select it. Selected. Bullet. I could highlight it. Could Alt H. Upper ribbon. H I I table text highlight color table yellow button and go leaving to yellow. Menus, leaving and I just happen to know that keyboard command by the way. If I didn't, I could press Alt H to go to the home tab and then down arrow to get into the ribbon and press tab until I get to um the where you know where you can highlight where it has highlight colors listed. So now if I up arrow Bull and down levels level one. Bullet reading web pages and PDFs. So because that's highlighted yellow, it's going to read it in that voice. So that's just an example of what another thing you can do with um, speech and sound schemes. And let's let's check out a couple others. I'm going to press Alt Insert S Sierra once again. Select the scheme dialog. So our choices here. Read highlight text. For that was another one that I created that I didn't like. But, so I went to the top with Control Home. Classic, two of 20. We have just classic speech and sound schemes. Highlighted text, three of 26. That's one I created. Read highlight text. I need to delete that one because I created that one as well. Untitled, five of 20. Word classic, six of 26. Word classic is what we've had it on. 
Attributes and colors, 7 of 26. Attributes and colors. So let's see what happens if we go to that one. Edit level 1. Uh, Boot. Uh, let me go back to Word Classic here because I don't want it to tell me. Hang on. Select the scheme dialog. W. Web Rending. Word Classic. Edit level 1. Okay. Level level 1. Bullet reading web pages and PDFs. So now it's going to read normally like it did before. Okay. But. Page. So let's go back up here and I will select. Select the scheme. Attributes and colors. Classic left parent attributes and font info right parent. Let's do attributes and font info. I know we've been talking some about font um, today. So I'm going to press enter. Let's change Switch the scheme. Classic left parent. Calibri 11 points, normal, jaw settings allow you to customize important features to meet your needs. Learn so you heard it tell you all that font information. I know that the heading up here, because it's heading level one, is also going to give us different information. Calibri light, 16 points, heading level one. All right. So that reads you a lot of information. So while that, that may be helpful to some people, they may want to know exactly what that font information is, or you can have it distinguish that once again by sound. So, you know, the more you use JAWS, the more you navigate, the more you're, you know, you're going to have your own personal preferences and your students are going to do the same. They're going to want to lessen the information that they hear, decrease how much information they hear. So speech and sound schemes allow you to do that. They allow you to navigate quickly through a document. You can do things like, uh, have it play a sound for different heading levels. So if you want heading level one, you want a certain sound for that heading, heading level two, that way it doesn't have to say Cal Calibri light 16 points. Well, it doesn't have to say that. Let me switch it back here. Um, Select the scheme W web red word class switch to JAWS heading level one changing JAWS settings. So, you know, I may not mind hearing it say heading level one if I'm navigating through a heading level two. But if I'm reading a long document and I don't want to hear all that information, I could have it just play a sound. Um, so that's an example of how speech and sound schemes work. Um, like I said, I'm going to give you guys a bunch of resources where you can learn more about those. There's some pretty interesting ways to use those. So those are Task switching meeting. very, very useful. You can navigate through information very quickly and it can really save time when you're going through a document. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen here and see if you guys have any questions. All this. All right, we're going to open up the chat and feel free to ask Elizabeth any questions about speech and sound schemes or about text sure. analyzer. Uh, we had a, a question come in, Elizabeth, that uh -huh. we didn't get to. Um, okay. And so this is really about whether or not text analyzer can operate in multiple documents at the same time. Um, just to clarify, the question was, so can you toggle between documents or web pages and use text analyzer? Or are you saying it can simultaneously monitor two open documents? So if you go turn it on for like, I'm going to, here, let me, So you, if you go turn it on in default, if you go into JAWS Settings Center and you press, you know, insert six on the number row, and then you tell it uh, default, you go to Control Shift D, and that's going to set it for all applications rather than just what you're in right now. So if I go and I turn it on, um, and I'm I'm doing that right now, and I press Describe Inconsistencies. Then, you know, it'll read this in my document. And it'll also, it can read it on a web page as well. So um, if you turn that setting on, and those settings will take effect until you turn them off. So if you go into your JAWS setting center and you change those settings, um, like I'm going back into setting center right now, and if I go in here and I look at text analyzer, it's still on describe inconsistency. So if you want to monitor multiple windows, multiple documents, or if you want to say monitor a Word document versus, uh, well, a Word document and a Google Docs, I would suggest going into the settings center with insert six on the number row and then press control shift D for default and then type in text analyzer and down arrow and make your selection there, press a space bar and set it to monitor however you want it to. Well, 
Well, thank you um, for answering that question. We've got a few more that have come okay. in. Um, does the highlighted sound scheme only read differently for words that are highlighted with yellow? Um, that one is one that I created. So yes, that particular one, I created it to do that. If you wanted a different sound scheme uh, to read different colors, you could do that. But you would have to specify when you create a sound scheme, you go in and it, it asks you what, what is the foreground color and what is the background color. So um, yeah, but there are a lot of different ways to do it. There are a lot of options in there for reading the colors to you and behaving differently when it encounters those different colors. Great. Um, next question. How can I have the speech and sounds manager work with specific documents? For example, if I have a document that I want to read normally, but I have a Word document with formatting that I want to read differently. Well, when you go into, so when you open your document that you want to read normally, you can just, you know, make sure that you have it set on, um, let me try something before I tell you this real quick, because I think so I'm in a document, I'm going to select highlighted text and it switched to that scheme. Now I'm going to go to a different uh, document in Word. And I'm not sure if this is what you're asking, but um, so I'm going to highlight this and see if it tells me. Okay, so if you're in the same application, so if you're in Microsoft Word and you have two documents open, you can only select one sound scheme. So it's gonna go with whatever sound scheme you have selected. If you have two different applications, for example, maybe a Google Docs, you know, you wouldn't, you can just change the sound scheme for the application that you uh, want it to read differently. But if those two documents happen to be in Word, then, you'll have to change that sound scheme when you want to read the other document. So you press insert alt S and then choose that scheme. And then when you're finished reading that document with that, you know, created scheme or that different scheme, then you would press insert alt S again and go back to the word classic scheme. Great, thank you. So we've got two questions that have come in that seem like they're uh, two folks who are encountering some very specific problems. Okay. Uh, if Do we have time to, to address those before sure. we move on with the presentation? Yeah, let's All see right. what they are. Uh, might be off topic here, but I'm using Word 2016. F7 for spell check. And when I choose change all, it is not correcting the spelling of that same word in the entire document. Any tips? Um, are you pressing space on, I tell you what, send me an email because uh, there's some, there's some things that we could take a look at and see. Um, yeah, send me, an, send us an email to training at vispero.com. I don't have a quick answer to that because there it could be a couple reasons why that's happening. So send an email to training at vispero.com because there are a couple ways to choose change all. You can do it with the keyboard or you can do it with uh, by tabbing there and pressing enter or space. So yeah, just send an email to training at vispero.com and we'll help you figure that out. Great. I've added that email to the chat. And one final question regarding speech and sound schemes. I'm trying to change what JAWS does when I encounter bold text and set it to change voice and saved my settings. I restarted JAWS afterwards, but it won't work. What's going on? Am I doing something wrong? Again, I'm not sure about that. So if you're changing it to that sound scheme, um, and when you restart JAWS, it's not working. Once again, send me an email to training, uh, send us an email to training at vispero.com and we can help you walk through those settings and, and show you how to do that. Because again, there could be multiple reasons why that's not working. But that is, that's another great reason to use speech and sound schemes because uh, as you're reading text, and I may not have said this earlier, as you're reading through text, JAWS doesn't 
necessarily just readily announce that you have some bolded text. And sometimes, you know, you need to make sure text is bolded. So if you use a speech and sound scheme, it'll, it'll read that text or it should read that text. All right. Well, thank you so much, Liz. We do not have any more questions at this time. All right. Um, well, before we go here, before we finish up here. Um, yeah, so I do want to mention that speech and sound schemes, um, you, when you create them, you know, you, you save them and you can also transfer them to a different computer. You could share them from one computer to another, uh, which is very, very useful to do. So if you created one that you really, really like and you want to be able to use it, um, you know, work or school or home or whatever, you could definitely do that. So um, different places to find information. Now, like I said earlier, we, we are currently having a contest uh, on creating speech and sound schemes. The it's it's currently it's available in the US only as far as uh, the the prize that people when, but we encourage everybody to go ahead and share your speech and sound schemes because you'll also have the opportunity to possibly have your scheme incorporated into JAWS 2022. So if you want details on the contest, you can go to freedomscientific.com slash speech and sounds. That's sounds with an S on the end, plural. And even if you don't take part in the contest, which we hope that you will, but even if you don't, you can learn a lot of information there about creating them. So if you work with speech and sound schemes here and you really like how that works, uh, just go there and you'll find a lot of resources. There's a video, um, our FS cast podcast. There, there was a podcast interview uh, with someone who has found some unique ways of using those speech and sound schemes. And then just uh, the links that will get you to resources to show you how to create them. And also, I just wanted to let you guys know as well, because I know some of you are pretty new to JAWS, and I'm very, very happy that you're here today. And we do have a lot of training material on our, our training page, freedomscientific.com slash training. And we have a page for teachers or assistive technology instructors um, where you can go to learn more. Of, there are a lot of resources there as well, but you can go specifically to learn more about JAWS. And we currently have eight modules. Each module contains lessons uh, that will show you how to perform specific tasks. And we are continuing to add a module each month. So go check that out as well. All right, do we have any more questions or? Feel free to drop your question in the chat if I've somehow missed it. Uh, we'll be providing the closing code uh, closer to 1 p.m., so stick around for that. But uh, while we're waiting for questions to come in, Paul, do you want to review those uh, final discoveries and remaining slides? Sure. So what have we learned today? Uh, so we've, we've learned that Text Analyzer enables you to find inconsistencies in your document independently on your own. That speech and sound schemes allow you to use spoken text or sounds to identify areas of documents and web pages or different attributes, all sorts of things you can do with it. So you're getting the same information more quickly, more efficiently. You're using fewer keystrokes to get the information that you want. Let's talk now about getting JAWS through APH. We have annual licenses available for JAWS for $90 annually and $80 annually for Zoom text. Uh, there's a portal you go through and you get those licenses and you can renew them each year. Uh, $90 for JAWS, $80 for Zoom text. Needed more information on that, let us know and we'll be happy to direct you and guide you and Make sure that you can find what you need and get those licenses. We want to talk to you about a special event that's going on later on in May. 
It's called the National Coding Symposium. APH Connect Center is involved in this, along with the California School for the Blind. Again, it's, it's called the National Coding Symposium. It's free, it's virtual, uh, hosted by the Connect Center, California School for the Blind, CSB. It's on Tuesday, May 11th through Friday, May the 14th. You can learn more and you can register at aphconnectcenter.org slash coding. I've go to the Connect Center and you can find information on it there if you forget the full length, but it's a link, it's aphconnectcenter.org slash coding. And our final slide related to this is our Code Jumper product that we've got a webinar coming up this week about actually. And we've had several in the past and it is a great way to demonstrate block coding with different sounds and all sorts of different things that can be done to demonstrate the basics of block coding. It's a quota product. It's available for $795 on quota, $999 if you use non-quota funds. And it's a very inclusive tool. So everyone in the classroom can use it, uh, not just students who are blind and visually impaired but it's a tremendous tool and we'll be talking about it this week in another webinar. Thank and you, Paul, for that. That's the last of our slides. So if we have any more questions that have come in, we can certainly get to those. And uh, if not, we can get to our code. Absolutely. So Elizabeth, one more question came in. How do I transfer speech and sound schemes between computers? Ah, uh, you have to find, there's a file uh, that you have to go into, you have to find that file, and then you can copy it, but you have to know where to look for it, and then you have to know where to put that. Um, again, if that's something that you would like to do, uh, send an email to training at vespero.com, and I will send you step-by-step -step information on how to do that. So yeah, you, you have to go into the JAWS folder and find it, and then uh, you can copy it over. All right. Well, unless I've missed anything, those were our questions for today. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for presenting on JAWS Text Analyzer and Speech and Sound Schemes. You've gotten tons of kudos in the chat um, about how helpful and informative this presentation has been.